Okay, have you enjoyed a very wholesome meal? Thank you, thank you. You're very, very good pizza. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Luigi. We're going to talk about iambic pentameter, okay? And this is the bread and butter of classical poetry, of older poetry. And if you like rap, if you like poetry, you need to listen to this because this will help you write basic poetry. It'll help you write rap. It's all about the stresses. What is iambic pentameter? Well, I am is a foot. It's uh, two symbols. Da-dum, 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 da-dum. Why did I say that many times? Because it's pentameter, pent five. Da-dum, 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 da-dum. So we have in front of us Percy Bysshe Shelley here. Um, Ozymandias, very famous poem. I'll just read the first stanza. I met a traveller from an antique land who said, Two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert near them on the sand. And we're going to stop there. It's all about um, these two statues that they called Memnon, the Greeks, uh, when they went into Egypt uh, in classical times, called uh, these the Memnons. Uh, one of them, its head was lying in the sand. But of course, in more recent times, in Percipus Shelley was 18th century, early 18th century, I think. Um, not great with the history of, of poetry. But anyway... Um, they went there, uh, I don't think he went there, but he would have read about it, seen photos. No, he wouldn't have seen photos, didn't quite exist at that time. <laughs> He'd have seen sketches of it. Um, okay, but yeah, so just outside Cai uh, Cairo on the Giza Plateau, these great statues of Memnon, and it, w it struck Shelley when he saw these sketches that um, there's this king that was thought to be Ramses uh, II, Ramses the Great, uh, this great commander, and yet now his uh, statue has been struck down. It's in the stand. It's in the sand. Uh, we don't need to go into that. Is it iambic pentameter? Does it follow? Da -dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum. I met a traveller from an antique land, who said to vast and trunkless legs of stone, stand in. The deaths are near them on the sand. Half sunk a shattered visage lies whose frown. It does, doesn't it? It's iambic pentameter. And the whole of that poem is very strict iambic pentameter. He was a very strict, classically trained poet, was older Percy Biss Shelley. Um, and of course, we don't always stick rigidly to that. And we'll go into that a little bit later. But now we'll go on to another one. Is it just for poetry, this iambic pentameter? Well, no. We've got Shakespeare here. I was going to find Richard III. Um, Richard III. Okay, I can't find Richard III. We're going to go to Christopher Marlowe instead. Um, in terms of Richard III, it's his famous speech about uh, this is our, the winter of our discontent made glorious summer by this son of York. And if you look at that, again, strict iambic pentameter. And you must remember this. This is not something you just conjure up. You can't just change words. So, for example, here, look, we got um, uh, Christopher Marlowe, um, 16th century, very famous poet, sort of the precursor almost to Shakespeare. He was the one that uh, really led the way, and then Shakespeare followed on his coattails um, and wrote wonderful plays like Doster Faustus. Um, I forget, he, he wrote several uh, wonderful plays. Um, you can't just change it. The word thousand, I can't change it to thousand. Launch. I can't change a launch. Uh, ilium is ilium. I can't change it. Ilium. So it's integral. It is intrinsic to the English language, this stress. And that's what you need to remember. If you're writing poetry, if you're writing rap, you can't change the stress of the words uh, unless you're doing it intentionally and you know what you're doing. And that's an advanced skill because the words are stressed as they are. So this is Dr. Faustus uh, by Christopher Marlowe. And this is the famous speech where he's been sent Helen of Troy as um, his uh, bedfellow for the night. We'll just read a little bit of it. Was this the face that launched a thousand ships? 
and burnt the topless towers of Ilium? Sweet Helen, make me immortal with a kiss. Her lips suck forth my soul, see where it flies. Come, Helen, give me my soul again. Here will I dwell, for heaven be in these lips, and all is dross that is not Helena. Is that iambic pentameter? Well, was this the face that launched a thousand ships? Yeah. And burnt the topless towers of Ilium. Sweet Helen, make me immortal with a kiss. Her lips suck forth my soul, see where it flies. Why did they write this way? Well, it meant that it had a rhythm. <clears throat> It just meant it sounded more poetic, but also it helped the actors memorise this, because this was a play, of course. And you find that throughout Shakespeare, throughout Marlowe, throughout so much of, you know, the classical works of English literature, even if you go to the King James Version of the Bible, um, which we know was almost 95% of that was William Tyndale's translation anyway, who was sadly burnt at the stake in Antwerp for, uh, for translating the Bible. Um... You can find, for example, passages of Job in iambic pentameter. And that's why it sounds so beautiful. And somehow the modern translations don't always capture that poetic beauty. Although I guess it's not... Well, certain books of the Bible, like the Psalms, were songs. Um, so they would be poetic. Uh, the book of Job, not so sure on that one. Anyhow, we come forward now. 1917... This is Wilfred Owen. Wilfred Owen is a classically trained poet. He wrote poetry before the war. Ghosts of the Shadwell Stair, very good if you look that one up on Poem Hunter. Um, but he, he plays with iambic pentameter. He doesn't stick to it strictly. So he starts off the first uh, line here in the, the first stanza. Then double like a bear goes under sacks. But then the second line... Knock need coughing? That's wrong. Knock need coughing like hags. We curse through sludge. So he's he's messing around with that one. And then again, down here in the second stanza, gas, gas, quick boys! An ecstasy of fumbling. It doesn't really fit with iambic pentameter. And that's what made Wilfred Owen greater than Sassoon. Siegfried Sassoon, uh, not the famous hairdresser, that was Vidal, I believe, um... Siegfried helped him a lot, helped get um, Wilfred Owen published posthumously, because, of course, Siegfried so soon survived the war. Wilfred Owen didn't. He died storming the San Quentin Canal in 1918, uh, just before, well, November, right before the end of the war, uh, during the Hundred Days Advance, the greatest victory in the history of the British Army. Uh, well, yeah, in my opinion, where we basically defeated the Germans uh, in that, that last hundred days with a combined arms offensive such as we've never produced before or since. But that's a digression. Um, this is what makes Wilfred Owen so skillful, that he has iambic pentameter. So, till on the haunting flares we turned our backs and towards... So the and doesn't really fit. Towards our distant rest began to trudge. Of tired, outstripped five nines that drop behind. So, <clears throat> I, I'm going to read it. Because we need to read it. It's a great poem. I love it. And I'm going to read it. Bent double like old beggars under sacks. Knock need, coughing like hags, we curse through sludge. Till on the haunting flares we turned our backs. And towards our distant rest began to trudge. Men marched to sleep. Many had lost their boots, but limped on bloodshod. All were lame, all blind, drunk with fatigue, deaf even to the hoots of tired outstripped five nines that dropped behind. Gas! Gas! Quick, boys! An ecstasy of fumbling, fitting the clumsy helmets just in time. But someone still was yelling out and stumbling and floundering like a man in fire or lime. Dim through the misty panes of thick green light, as under a green sea, I saw him drowning. In all my dreams, before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. If in some smothering dreams you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in, 
and watched the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face, like a devil's sick of sin. If you could hear at every jolt the blood come gargling from the froth-corrupted lungs, obscene as cancer, bitter as the cud, of vile, incurable sores on innocent tongues, my friend, you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some desperate glory. The old lie, dolce et decorum est pro patria mori. So just a quick thing as well, um, not directly related. Just, oh, we should just say, um, why is it sometimes in these poems we have a little line? Um, there we are, here we are. A little apostrophe. Why is it not floundering and floundering like a man in Farrell? And that's correct. It's not floundering. They've chopped a syllable out. Why has he done that? Why has Wilfred Owen chopped that out? And floundering like a man in fire or lime. It sort of fits the iambic pentameter. It would have too many syllables if you had that there. And so if any of you are doing poetry or rap, think about your syllables. Yeah, Make sure they fit. Uh, just a little point on the Latin. I'm not a Latinist. Um, but the one thing I do know, you don't pronounce... Sorry, you do not pronounce it like French. You don't say dolce e, decorum e. You, you pronounce your T's, dolce et, decorum est. A big question always in Latin is, do you pronounce your C's as k or s? We all say decorum, so that's a K. But then again, I say Scipio Africanus, not Scipio Africanus. It sounds rather silly. So to be fair, I'm not consistent on that point. But just a little tip. If any of you fancy writing a bit of poetry, um, remember that. Iambic pentameter. Durdum, 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 durdum. You'll find, even as you write the most basic of lines, if you get the rhythm right, and this goes for rap as well, get the rhythm right, uh, write it in iambic pentameter if you're doing a poem, you'll be amazed how easy it is to write something that sounds rhythmic um, and musical, because after all, a poem is a song, isn't it? Thank you.